TV Grace presents the inexpressible words of God, the gospel of grace on the lips of Jesus Christ men. Abba Father. Greetings to all of you watching, all of you from wherever you're watching from the Caribbean, Spain, Central South America, we greet you directly from Miami. And we declare you blessed and receive that this word is going to bring change in your life. So call a friend and tell them that growing in grace is on the air. Second letter to the Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17, we are the ones that say, Abba, Father, we do not say hallelujah. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, and let me clarify, for you to be in Christ, you can't be placed in. You have been placed there because you can't choose him. He's chose you before the foundation of the world. So if you are a chosen one that's in Christ, and I am saying you're not beside him, you are in Christ. He that unites with the Lord is one spirit with him. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the apostle says here that you are a very special person. I am saying if you believe what is written, so look at what it says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. It is to say, you are a new creation. A new creation is something totally created. It's something new that's taken place. You're not what you think you are, nor what you see. If you leave here believing that you are a new creation, you will never behave as you've been behaving because you are a new creation. And all creation has a point of development. It has a growth and a manifestation according to how that creation is fed. A child is a creation. If it nurtures itself properly, it grows healthy. You are a new creation. If you nurture yourself properly, you're going to be a healthy believer. Instead of a babe in Christ, you're going to be mature in Christ because you are a new creation. How many are a new creation? Yo soy una nueva creación. You are a new creation. If you're in Christ, how many love Christ? Well, you are in Christ. Well, let's speak of that new creation whom you are. It says, the old things have passed away. Behold, all, say all, all things have become new. How? Am I going to teach this conference after you've been abused, after they've filled your mind with so much religious corruption, when all of the old has passed and all has been made new? Understanding this topic well understood, from tonight on, you're going to be a new person because all things have become new. Notice that everything has been made new, that the context, which is verse 16, look at what it says. It says, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. It is to say that you are a type of a new creation that you cannot be known in flesh because we'll be violating a principle. It is to say, to know Christ as Jesus of Nazareth, it is to be disrespectful to him. And to know you in the flesh is to disrespect you also, if you are in Christ. Because if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, you're not of him. Now, if you are a new creation, 
all of the old has passed. Everything the first Adam added has disappeared. Curse, sin, condemnation. Destituted from the glory of God. All of that is old because now you are a new creation. And in that new creation, well, Paul says that we are complete in him. Because it is a creation that lacks nothing. It is to say that you are complete, that you are ready to attain all that God has for you. And notice, if you are a new creation, you do not have to be concerned of your works because they've already been ordained beforehand. Let's read it, Ephesians 2.10. Those that take notes, for those that wonder if what we teach is true, well, in Ephesians 2.10, look at what it says. For we are his workmanship. We are what? His workmanship created, say created, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Listen, that is brought about by the new creation, not your fasting nor your sacrifices, what you do carnally by your efforts, because here you cannot put your own thing into this because what's yours is already created. What may be preventing that to be manifested are your works. I was in a church for many years, hindering God, and God waited for me for 17, almost 18 years. Let me let him uh, get tired of his works. What does he think, that I do things uh, halfway? If I say you are a new creation, it's because I also have the works that belong to that creation. What you have to do is remain in God's rest. What well, God needs for you to be at rest. He that is in rest sometimes fears that he's not doing anything. But you cannot have fear. You should rest in Christ. And there's one thing you cannot do, though, is to speak. You cannot stop speaking. Because with that is what the good works prepared, ordained beforehand will be manifest. Let's see the context of what we've been speaking about in the second letter to the Corinthians 4-7 regarding the new creation. 4-7. But we have this treasure. Since you are a new creation, you are called a treasure. We have this treasure in an earthen vessel that the, the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. It is to say that you are a treasure. You are a new creation. But... It is in a vessel of clay that's weak, of flesh. But if you know that you are a new creation, the weaknesses are not going to hinder you. The weaknesses are not going to be able to stop the good works that are going to be manifested in you. And don't fear that. Those good works are going to be performed in you. You don't have to help God. They begin to work in you and they begin to be manifest in you till they form you. What's God's, it's powerful. It's a new creation in you. You don't have to doubt if you're a bad Christian or bad believer or someone that's on the sideline. No, everything God creates, it's good. And he does not make respecter of person or give his spirit by measure. Therefore, if you are a new creation, you are complete, you lack nothing, and here there's no one better than anyone. You're not better than I, and I'm not better than no one. We are all children of God, and we proclaim, Abba Father. In the flesh, we always boasting and see ourselves better than others. That's why we know no one according to the flesh, because there, there is competition. I have more than you. You have more than I. I've studied more than you. I come from so-and-so place. You're a resident. I'm not a resident. And the differences begin. 
But in the spirit, we are all the same. In the spirit, there's com- competition. In the flesh, there's competition. But in the spirit, we're all the same. And my good works are going to be manifest. <laughs> that is why when you get to this ministry, you fulfill yourself as a person because you tap into the most important, which is the treasure, the new creation, and you begin to believe God. You believe everything God says about you. And you begin to be fulfilled and your complexes begin to disappear. A new manifestation begins to develop by the knowledge you're receiving because you have the wisdom of God in you. So therefore, we behave differently and speak differently, which is the next verse. Chapter 4, verse 13. And since we have, what? The same spirit of faith. Listen, to that new creation, God gives them the same spirit of faith that Jesus of Nazareth had. Yes, the same spirit of faith. Jesus was flesh, but the spirit that was in him was good. He detained the winds. So having the same spirit of faith that was in Jesus of Nazareth, now that spirit of faith that was in Jesus of Nazareth, it's in you. You don't have to envy anything of Jesus of Nazareth because he imparted it to the new creation. Now, that isn't in your flesh. That's in the new creation. Having the same spirit of faith according to what is what? Written. You should make sure that what you speak is written so you can have security. If it's written, that gives you security. Lord, what I am confessing, it's written. And since I have the same spirit of faith, I am a new creation. It says, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak. These are instructions that are simple that are written and revealed in the word of God. Now, a new creation, if all of the old things have passed, imagine a new creation fasting three days. Locked up in a room, screaming out, Jehovah, have mercy on me. He hasn't believed what I've spoken. Lord, deliver me from the devil. A new creation asking to be delivered from the devil. The new creation has it all. Lord, don't let me go to hell. A new creation in hell that's complete, that has the same spirit of faith. Lord, that this man that's beside me, that my neighbor, it's a spiritualist. Let him not cast spells on me. A new creation fearing a spiritualist. (laughs) a new creation on an altar pleading have mercy and another fool laying hands on him (laughs) I'm saying if you are a new creation if you are new a new creation listen you are well you are a supernatural man a supernatural woman imagine a new creation Old things have passed. Old, say old, and everything has become new. The only thing, you didn't know it. All of those things became new 2,000 years ago. We have fallen behind. I am dealing with newspapers that are 2,000 years old. Imagine, I'm gathering them and I'm passing it on to you. They gave us bad news From Rome, they've deceived us, sending us masses, novenas, and worshiping statues, San Martín de Porre, Judas Tadeo. The new creation doesn't need none of that. The new creation, what it needs is information from the gospel after the cross. That's what the new creation needs. Look at what it says in the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 4, speaking of that new creation. Let's go to part B. If then you were risen with Christ, notice that a new creation 
is told that you've been risen with him. Paul sees you on the other side because what's left is very little before that takes place. As soon as the new creation is nurtured with all of the information, it's very little. So seek those things which are above if you've risen with him. Seek the things that are where? Above. When it says above is that what was before was from down here. Above means where the kingdom of God is here in the mind. That's where the kingdom of God is formed. Because if you look up, what you're going to see is the sidereal space. Airplanes. Seek the things above where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things above on the earth for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our lives appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. You know how you place your eyes on the things above when I'm going to tell you how I do it. I read the gospel. In reading the gospel, it gets to my mind. Therefore, as it is written, I believe. And when I speak, I am seeking the things from above. Now, God, God tries to get you out of your body, out of the body through confession. God attempts that you do not submit to this earth, but that you be transformed. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, Romans 12, 2. So therefore, when you don't conform to this world, you are practicing so that when your body is transformed, you can be an excellent believer in pure knowledge of the kingdom of God. But look at what Colossians chapter 1, 13 through 14 says. It says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. And not only did he deliver you, but he transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. Where did he transfer us to? To the kingdom of his beloved son. He transferred us. And you know where that kingdom is? Right here. In your mind. Because the kingdom is now. Paradise is after. The kingdom of God has drawn near. When he died and was risen, it was manifest. So then he delivered us from the power of darkness, of darkness that were here, that the evangelicals and Christians have it. There's still a full of darkness here. And I'm trying to remove it through conferences like this to see if I cleanse the darkness, not evil because darkness means the lack of light regarding the conference we're speaking about spiritual thing and, and they're full of darkness all evangelical pastors all these christians that tell you christ loves you come they're full of darkness here they don't understand what the new creation is about i have to deliver to them the ones that see me via television though they think they're a new creation they deny them saying that the devil is going to take you away. You're going to wind up in hell. So what is it? Or you are a new creation and all things have passed and your works are prepared beforehand and you have been delivered from the power of darkness. And you have risen together with Christ or you're going to hell. Listen, we have to decide that once and for all. Don't you see that the worst liars are those that speak the truth and never come to the full knowledge of it? The liar, not him. The liar tells you straight up and you know he's lying. Worse is the one that adorns you with the truth and then he looks for ways to weaken it.
So then he's delivered you from the power of darkness. He's given you the same spirit of faith. He says you are complete, that you lack nothing. Listen, Abraham sort this I possess and this that you are have possessed. He sort it. Let's finish with that there in Hebrews so you can see. Hebrews chapter 11, look at what it says in verse 8 through 10. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out without knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelled in land of the land of promise, foreign country, dwelled in tents with Jacob and Isaac because he awaited the promise for he waited for the city which has foundations. I as the master builder lay down the foundation. That's the city he awaited for. The city he awaited for, Paul was bringing the blueprints, the city that has foundations whose builder and maker is God. Abraham looked for something he could not find because he that had the blueprints was called Paul and he wasn't born. They were not written, drawn. And the constructor or builder was called Jose Luis. And that one was nowhere to be found. So therefore, Abraham, and look at what it continues to say, through verse 16, now those who say such things, such they are seeking a country. If they had been thinking of their own, they had time to return, but they longed for one that was better, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared what? A city for them. And all these, having attained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, which is that city. It says, having provided something better for us, that they should be made perfect apart from us. We have been perfected because we know that Christ with one offering has made us perfect forever. They awaited for it. They've never received it because the one that had the blueprint was nowhere to be found and the builder neither. Now the city is beginning to be formed. You're not going to leave your body not knowing about the city that belongs to you. You have to leave this body with knowledge of the city that you're going to attain. I know the city. I speak of it. And when I speak of it, we rejoice. But the most glorious thing is going to take place when our bodies are glorified then we're going to reign together with him forever because we will never die. That is the promise from lid to cover, from tail to tail. Abraham dreamt of what I'm speaking to you today. They never attained it. They felt they were sinners. They felt rejected. They didn't know the plan. Abraham lied when he arrived with his wife. He says, that's not my wife. That's my sister. They would lie. They would make arrangements. Uh, Moses said, don't kill. He killed. Don't commit adultery. He committed adultery. Solomon, David, they've all failed. All the prophets, they called on to the city. They were awaiting the city. The apostles arrived and they failed. They got an F in their exam. So then Paul arrived then spoke of it and they killed him. No, what? This city is that easy? No, that we are complete, that with one offering, he's perfected us forever, that we walk in good works beforehand. I believe, therefore I speak. No, Paul, you need to die. And they killed him in Rome. 2,000 years passed. And today we are talking about that city. Abba Father. Let's stand.